How's it going, YouTube? This is Skull, and this is my game room. So, coming to the entrance of my room, we got Grumpy Cat saying, go away. So, of course, that's an invitation for us to step right in. And immediately to the left, you will see uh, first of many posters. I have a whole lot of posters that you're going to see. This is my poster for Pokemon Heroes. It's my favorite Pokemon movie. And right here is a store display for Pokemon Gold and Silver. This was hung in an actual Toys R Us back in the year 2000 when the game's first released, and now it's mine. Below those, you will see a custom magazine rack with all of my issues of Nintendo Power that I currently own. I do plan on getting more. Right now I have, I don't know, I think around 50, something like that. Anyway, and then up there is a ginormous flag for the 501st Legion of which I am a member. And if you round the corner here, you will see Let's see here. My complete main series collection of Pokemon complete in box. Every single game here has the box, the manual, all the inserts, and the game itself. Just as if it had just been pulled off the shelf back when the games first released. It goes all the way up through Gen 7. Of course, I have all the Switch games in my Switch collection. Above that, we've got this poster for... Let's go Pikachu and Eevee. It is double-sided and I just have two copies of it. But I just really love this. I mean, man, the glare is annoying. I'm so sorry about that. Um, see if we can hide it a little. But man, I just really love these posters, so I had to hang them up. Up above there, we have my Buster Sword. I made this completely myself. Uh, of course, this is Cloud Strife's iconic weapon from Final Fantasy VII. Um, FF7R was just coming out and I felt like making a Buster Sword. So it's 100% wood. Every single part of it you see is wood. I'm very, very proud of it. And of course, that is the closet, which usually just houses storage. Um, and I just have this blue uh, blanket draped over it to act as a blue screen. I've only ever like used it as a blue screen maybe like three times. But it is there, and man, it makes the uh, camera really want to go yellow there, sorry. Right here we've got this table that um, I could pretty much put anything on here that I want. Although more and more often, I am using it as a 3D printer bed. So this is an Ender 3 3D printer. And you can see here my next 3D printed Pokemon that I'm working on. Pretty easy to tell what that is. Um, be sure to subscribe to stay updated for when this is finished. Of course, here is Zippy, my channel's mascot. This is the one and only Zippy, who I love very, very much. Just looking over the shaman, waiting for it to be finished. This is a little iPad that I have for if I need to make notes about a future video, then it's right there ready for me to use. To the right of the closet, we've got this beautiful, beautiful picture poster of Aerith from FF7R, which was gifted to me by um, by one of my friends. Thank you so much, Floxiana, for that. Oh uh, man, just absolutely gorgeous. And of course, my silver play button there for hitting 100,000 subscribers. I sincerely doubt I'll ever get a gold play button. I don't think I'll ever hit a million, but you know, silver, silver is a pretty nice prize. Uh, right here, we've got all of my classic Apple uh, products. We've got uh, at least one of every kind of iPod ever made. iPod Touch, Shuffle, Mini, uh, iPod Classic, iPod Nano. Uh, we also have a few iPhones, an iPad over there. I just love collecting retro Apple tech. I can't tell you why. It's just really, really fun. And below there are my lightsabers. You know, if you couldn't tell, I am a Star Wars fan. And this should be proof right here. I'm telling you, you're going to see a whole lot of posters. 
This is a uh, D23 poster for The Force Awakens, which is my favorite Star Wars film. I am so sorry for the glare, everybody. It's really hard for me to... There we go. That's a good angle. So, yeah, I just really love that poster. There are not that many of these out there. I'm very fortunate that a fan sent me one. Uh, below that, this is kind of a unique thing, um, but it's so cool I just have to display it prominently in my room. This is an actual storyboard that was used in the making of an animated film. If you ever seen the film Balto, okay, this is from that, and this is the actual storyboard. It's not a copy. When they were making the film, somebody drew this and used this to help make the film. And it's literally one of a kind, so I'm very happy to have that. I love the Balto film, so yeah. Above my, uh, an, this is just another storage room here. Above that is a uh, Nintendo plaque from Rose Colored Gaming. They don't really make those anymore. It's very unfortunate. Um, but I am happy to have one. It just, you know, fits really well at the room. And above that is the faces of, phases of the Death Star. Man, so, so cool. And of course we have my droid R2B1. I made this entirely on my own. I have a video on my channel showing off him in action. He's turned off right now. There's not much of a reason to have him on. Um, but yeah, so if you go to my channel and search for R2B as in Boba Fett 1, that is him. And here is one of the newest additions to my room, my arcade cabinet. I made this completely from scratch. Um, if I were to move a little stool here, you could see that it does have a coin door and it does work. So yeah, um, this obviously is not, that's not a real Donkey Kong in there. That's just MAME, but I'm so, so happy with it. I have a working arcade door over here. I have a bill dispenser that was originally used at Chuck E. Cheese's. So yeah, um, it's pretty fun. But if I ever feel like um, just skipping the coin, I have a, uh, a combo set up. That lets me play whatever I want. So yeah, um, let's just go ahead and exit out of that actually. Um, so, more posters, yeah. Uh, this is a poster for Pokemon the first movie, and as you can see, it has been signed. Uh, it's been signed by Veronica Taylor and Eric, Eric Stewart, um, the original voices of Ash and Brock. I fully intend to get Rachel Lillis, the voice of Misty, to sign that at some point. Um, and over there is a poster for Pokemon 2000. Just seemed to go well with uh, with Pokemon the first movie. I love I love this poster. I'm so proud of it. Oh yeah, speaking of, I forgot to mention, um, Veronica Taylor also signed my copy of Pokemon Yellow. Which, man, when I met her, she was just such a nice person. Uh, she was so so personable. I'm she was such a joy to to uh, talk to. So yeah, um, <laughs> you're going to see quite a few signatures as time goes on. I think. Um, so, let's see here. Um, terrible glare, but that is a poster for Apollo 13. One of my favorite films, obviously, it's not video game related, but, you know, I, I am a space nerd. You will see a lot of space related stuff in this room towards the end of the video. Moving down here, we've got this little table here full of stuff for me when I'm working on 3D printing and stuff like that, either printing or finishing the prints. You can, you know, just, if you, if you know anything about crafting, you know what all that is. Over here, we've got this amazing, ginormous 32-inch CRT television. And if the wine is hurting your ears, I apologize. It's not much I can do about that. I'm very happy to own this, even if it is heavy. It's heavier than I am. Um, but I have a uh, NES hooked up to it. As you can see there, it's just playing the demo for Legend of Zelda. And I also have my childhood N64. That N64... Um, I have had since the year 2001, so what is that, 20, 20 plus years now? And I'm so happy that I, I still have it. I'm never going to modify it, I'm never going to get rid of it. Uh, and it is hooked up to this TV so I can play stuff whenever I want. Over here is my Windows 98, another thing I've had since I was a kid, although I think I've had the N64 for longer. Um, I use this to play old PC games. Uh, if you if you know anything about PC gaming, you'll know that modern PCs usually don't play old CD-ROMs or floppy disks very well. So it's nice to have this PC sitting around for whenever I want to play older games. Up there, oh, uh, worth mentioning, I do use blackout curtains. UV light just 
completely destroys anything video game related. So if you have a game room, get blackout curtains. Do yourself a favor. Up there at the very top, you will see posters for Breath of the Wild and Super Mario Odyssey. Those were pre-order bonuses for ordering the games through Best Buy. Uh, we've got some broken consoles here. None of them work very well. Um, the Genesis doesn't output video for some reason. The N64 just flat out doesn't work at all. The PS1 does work, but only sometimes. It has a, a lazy disk drive. If you know anything about PS1s, you know about it. I'm going to probably modify that with the next station. And I'm pretty sure that Xbox just needs recapped. I'm just too lazy to do it. So, my NES collection, or my NES, my, my Nintendo Switch collection is looking a lot less than it was last time you guys saw it. I've been busy selling off games. At some point, I just realized I don't care enough about them. I'd rather sell the games I don't care about, use the money to buy games I do care about. Even so, I do still have over 200 games. Uh, like, I, I had over 400, and I still have over half of what's left. That's just crazy to me. Um, of course, we got some standouts like um, like Breath of the Wild, the greatest video game ever made. Uh, and I have this poked out for a simple reason. This is a copy of Super Mario Odyssey signed by Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario. Very happy to have that. Yeah, uh, you, you'll see some extra systems here. So I have uh, a bunch of extra 3DS systems. I have 12 altogether. So we've got the uh, Metroid Samus Returns 3DS XL. Uh, new 3DS XL. We've got this. Uh, this was actually my very first 3DS, actually. This blue X and Y themed 3DS XL. And we got a uh, Super Nintendo themed new 3DS XL and a Galaxy themed new 3DS XL. So cool. Uh, we got some collector's editions of Switch games. We got all my Switch controllers, uh, all of my EAS Switch games. I own a complete East Asia Soft physical Switch collection. Some extra PS4 games that I'm busy selling on eBay right now. Uh, and all my extra Switch lights, actually. I got the, um, got the uh, Zosh and Zamazenta Switch light, the Diaga Palkia Switch light, and a Turquoise Switch light. And this is cool, actually. This is my Pokemon League badges um, that I collected way back, like, in, in the early 2010s. Um, at my local Pokemon League back when I was huge into that. I am missing one. If anyone has that, I'm more than happy to buy it. Just, <laughs> it's going to bug me if I can't get that. All the others I actually earned fair and square. And of course I got some Porgs. Because Porgs, I mean seriously. Uh, got a Pokeball themed 2DS XL there. And uh, I think I covered everything there. Moving on to the next gaming shelf. Over here, I have the three starters of, of Pokemon as pop figures. Got a little Splatoon plushie, a little fan-made Splatoon plushie, a little Yoshi plushie, it's adorable. And this is a, uh, a card holder that was in a game store. Uh, like, it ran out of card packs and they were like, do you just want it? So I said, sure. There is my Wii U collection. I am only like 30 games away from owning a complete North American library, and I'm hoping to finish that at some point. I do have Devil's Third, which is the hardest one to get, so everything else should be easy after that. You can see my Wii games there, very modest set. Um, you'll, you'll see mostly Pokemon stuff there in the middle. I do own every single Pokemon game, every single one, uh, with the exception of one that is in the mail on its way to me. So. Yeah, be on the lookout for Pokemon games. I even own Pokemon Box, Ruby, and Sapphire. Yeah, and of course those are my GameCube games. It's a it's a modest collection, but I but with GameCube I've never really been on it, been big on it. So I'm trying to just get the ones that I knew I'd absolutely love. Uh, some extra GameCube games there in Japanese. This is my 3D Blu-ray collection. I do have a 3D TV. Let me tell you, playing 3D movies on a home TV is actually kind of insane. Like, it looks better than a theater could ever look because of the technology differences. So, I've started collecting 3D Blu-rays. Uh, yeah, it's it's totally, totally worth it. And totally awesome. I, I really do love uh, having them. You could just, you know, see what, which ones I have there. Got a Porg Pop, because, of course, Porgs. Uh, we got next shelf are my PS4 games. I actually ended up with a whole lot more PS4 games than I expected. Um, some worth playing, some very, very, very not worth playing. My sole PS5 game so far, Ration and Clank Rift Apart, that was my pick for Game of the Year 2021. 
Uh, I do have a Blu-ray for AVG and X, the first hundred Angry Video Game Nerd episodes. My extremely modest PSP collection, I will be expanding that someday. Next up are all of my PS1 games. Uh, I love the PS1. <laughs> I just I just love it. I love the aesthetic. I love the games on it. Um, of course, of course uh, I've got Final Fantasy VII on it. The very first uh, non-Nintendo game I ever beat, actually. Pretty cool. My very, very mod is Dreamcast Collection. I'm just going to get a note for that. Uh, you can see my Vita games there. I don't really have anything worth bragging about, but I do have some. Underneath that, my OG Xbox Collection. And, yeah, I'm very, very proud to own so many of these, too. Including Drake of the 99 Dragons, which is signed by James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd. That's why I had it popping out there. <laughs> I love the uh, I love the OG Xbox. I love retro games. Couldn't you tell? My modest Xbox One collection. I don't know. I don't own any Series X games so far, but that's okay because Series X games don't exist yet. Uh, then we got my modest 360 collection. I actually own a whole lot of boxed Magnavox Odyssey 2 games. I do not own an Odyssey 2 yet. But now I got so many games, I may as well get one, right? Like, I think I own something like a quarter to a third of the whole library. <laughs> Below that are my PS3 games. Um, I got some must-plays, like God of War, uh, Last of Us. Um, but most of it's just shovelware. Um, but a lot of it was actually gifted to me by a fan a very long time ago. And I haven't forgotten that, so yeah. Um, and then we got my HD DVD collection. And just like 3D Blu-rays... I love collecting HD DVDs. Uh, it's a perfectly valid format. The picture is just as good as Blu-ray, and the discs are dirt cheap. So yeah, it's really, really fun to collect those. And then below that are my PS2 games. Whole, whole big variety of stuff there. So, next up, we got this poster for Sword Art Online Progressive, Aria of a Starless Night. And I know people are not SAO fans, but I am, and this movie is probably the best SAO anything they've ever made. If you if you don't like SAO, at least give this movie a try. It's absolutely perfect as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm going to be meeting the voice actors of Kirito and Asuna like in a week from now to get their signatures on this poster. I can't wait for that. So, right here we've got this little Heliop tile display along with an I Choose You postcard. This was sent to me by Corey. Thank you so much, Corey, for, for this. I haven't forgotten. Um, here are my soundtracks. <laughs> uh, this whole this whole shelf is pretty much CDs. Uh, I collect movie soundtracks. I just love listening to them over and over. And below that are my video game soundtracks, uh, including the soundtrack for Breath of the Wild. Just absolutely gorgeous. This is like the collector's edition. It has five discs, which includes like the DLC music and music from the trailers, it's beautiful. Also have the uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake soundtrack, just, man, like, that one album of the year at the Game Awards in 2020, and if you've never heard it, listen to it, it's beautiful. And then all my other soundtracks for various other things here, and then all my SAO CDs there at the end. I, I love collecting CDs, I've, I've recently gotten back into collecting them. I collected them like in the mid 2000s and then I stopped and now I've started again. I've just started to become an audiophile, I guess. Below that are all of my Pokemon CDs. This shelf is Japanese. This shelf is English. I own every English release except for two. I'm missing the soundtracks for Pokemon Stadium and Pokemon Live, both of which are hundreds of dollars. I'm not interested in spending that much on CDs, but I do have everything besides those two. Every single Pokemon English release ever, besides those two, and I even got doubles of that one. Um, and then above that are the Japanese CDs, like I said. It's a mixture of anime, TV show, movie, and then here here mingled into it are um, our video game soundtracks as well. Just love collecting Pokemon CDs, what can I say? Speaking of Pokemon, uh, yeah, here are my boxes for all the N64 games. Here's some of them extras that are loose. And then behind those are all the N64 games I have left. I I, uh, I, sold almost all of them. I just realized, you know, I'm never going to be able to finish collecting all of them. The games have just gotten too expensive. So, again, may as well sell what I don't want for games that I do want. 
uh, and I used a whole lot of the money that I spent, that, that I made selling N64 games, to buy these games that I was missing for my Pokemon collection. Totally worth it. And hey, if I want to play N64 games on a real system, I can just get an EverDrive, which I fully plan on doing. Moving on, the shelf at the top here, we have the big boxes for Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. We got a steelbook for Sun and Moon, and we got a steelbook for Pikachu and Eevee over there. Next shelf are all my Game Boy boxes of various kinds. Um, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I have every single Pokemon game complete in box, except for one, which is on in the mail on its way here. I even have some Japanese exclusive games here, like, of course, I got... Pokemon Green, um, but I also have this one here, Pokemon uh, Trading Card Game 2, The Attack of GR, something like that, I, I forget what it's called, but yeah, I've got so many, uh, so many Pokemon games, I even have this, which isn't a game, it's a Game Boy video, uh, that was fun, but yeah, all my boxes for Game Boy games on that shelf, followed by each of these shelves with different games as well. So, for all of these, I just have them in DS cases, so if I were to pull out this, for example, uh, it's a DS case with a custom printed cover, um, and I got all the covers from thecoverproject.net, and yeah, so it's a really, really efficient way of storing Game Boy games and being able to, like, look at them from the side and see, um, and see what they are. I do have some other stuff here, like I've got this random Pokey Rom CD still sealed up. I don't know why I got that. I've got the uh, Japanese Celebi distribution for Pokemon Stadium. Got some few loose cartridges in there. Um, oh, this, I really want to mention this. This is, if I can open it up real quick, uh, and it, have it not fall out, but here we go. This, holding onto it barely, you know what, here. This is a backup cartridge for Game Boy games. So this plugs into your computer with USB-C and you can back up your save games without worrying about losing the data due to a battery dying. So like uh, Pokemon Gold and Silver are notorious for having uh, the batteries die after only a few years. With that, you're able to back up your save, replace the battery, and put the save back onto the cartridge and continue right where you left off. You'll never lose a save file again. Totally, totally awesome. Then we got my Game Boy Advance games and a uh, case for Game Boy. Actually, I use that case now for like link cables and power cords and, and extra, <laughs> extra batteries, funny enough. Uh, then we got all my DS games, and including this, this is one of those Pokemon games I was talking about that was exclusive to Japan. It taught you how to play the card game. And then my 3DS games on the bottom shelf. So yeah, got my Game Boy games all nicely sorted. I got my CDs all nicely sorted. And I got my plushies all nicely sorted. I got a whole lot of plushies. I love collecting Poke plushes, especially life-size ones. Um, I know that Sizu is not a Poke plush, but I love her, so who cares? Um, but yeah, I got all kinds here, um, each of them with such a unique story. That is a Lily's Vulpix Snowy from Japan. Corey sent me that as well. Latios, Latios, a fan sent me those. I got a Piplup from Build-A-Bear, uh, Charmander that I got at the Pokemon World Championships 2016 San Francisco. Even more plushes down there. <laughs> uh, I actually have videos for some of these, so... Um, yeah, I just love collecting plushes. What can I say? Got a uh, Vantastic poster there. Hello, Vian. How are you doing? Uh, and then over here, I'll get to those in a second. These are my Pokemon DVDs and Blu-rays. I own every movie up through 19 on DVD, every season up through, sorry, a lot of heroes, up through 14 on DVD. And then down here, I've got... Oh, oh yeah, Seasons 20 and 21 on DVD as well. And then I got Mewtwo Returns on DVD, uh, first and fifth movies on Japanese DVD, and then every English Blu-ray thus far, um, which is not many. And the Blu-ray, and this Blu-ray is a terrible transfer. It's basically DVD quality on a Blu-ray disc for all four films. So that's terrible. 
And then I also have the Japanese Blu-ray for Pokemon I Choose You. I just love the Pokemon movies, can't you tell? And it's really important for me to physically own as much Pokemon as I can uh, in complete collections. It's just that important to me. Uh, here we've got my Sword Art Online Blu-rays. I do not have many because they are way too expensive. And down there are my box PC games, of which I do not have many. Uh, actually, I'll go on to this real quick. These are my boxes for various uh, old phones and stuff. You can you can just you know take a glance and see what all those are. Down here are my boxes for extra games, uh, game consoles. I mean, so I got my Vita box, my GameCube box, and a 3DS box that just don't go anywhere else in my room. Anyway, now we go up here. These are my handhelds. <laughs> so. Uh, we got a uh, 2DS Ocarina of Time, which is pre-installed, actually. I forgot about that. Got a red X and Y 3DS XL to complement the blue one I have. Uh, this Toys R Us-themed GBA is very important to me because it's identical. It's not the exact same one, but it's identical to the actual GBA that I had growing up. So when I got older and had money, I bought it all over again. Very happy to have that. Got two DMGs. Got two Game Boy Colors there. Uh, actually, here's the third one. And then here are my distribution carts. So, um, you remember back in like the late 2000s, early 2010s, when you would go to GameStop to pick up Pokemon? Well, this is these are the cartridges that they use to distribute them. And I've got, I think, seven of them, and I want more. <laughs> it's so cool to play through Platinum and then gift myself an Arceus after it's over. A legit Arceus. It's so cool. Over here are more handhelds. We got two Game Boy Pockets. This one is actually IPS modded. As you can see there, it has a nice backlight. Um, that's an original DS. Got two DS lights here, including the Dialga Palkia themed one. Three GBAs. This one is a GBA SP-101. Uh, that's another DS light. And I got two Pokewalkers. Because, I mean, obviously. <laughs> and then over here on this side of the couch, we got all four of my Pokemon 20th Anniversary 2DSs from Japan, all four of them. Very happy to have those. Got my Pikachu-themed N64, and underneath that is a spare Wii U. GameStop was just going to throw it out, because whoever turned it in didn't turn in the gamepad with it, so it's, it's useless. But I was like, you know what, I'll take it if you want, and they just gave it to me. <laughs> uh, and then here is my 3D printed life-size Cubone, the very first 3D printed project I ever did. Very, very happy with that. Can't wait to add Shaman to, to, uh, to keep him from being so lonely. Okay, I got light set up. That's so much better. So, um, yeah, so top shelf for all my NES games. I do have some of the heavy hitters. Uh, I have Metroid, I have the original Final Fantasy, Mario 1 and 3, and Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt is so fun to play over that CRT. Yeah, I got some of the heavy hitters, most of them, I think. Below that, we've got my Super Nintendo collection. More heavy hitters. Um, you know, Donkey Kong Country, Mario World, Yoshi's Island, uh, FF3, uh, tons of great stuff, and a Super Game Boy 2 to play Game Boy games through my Super Nintendo. Below that, we've got my Sega collection which is um, my single Master System game. Most of them are Genesis games. Fix-It Felix Jr. is a homebrew game based off of Wreck-It Ralph. Then a random loose Genesis game, and then my Soul 32X game. Uh, hold on, what is this called? Golf Magazine presents 36 Great Holes starring Fred Couples. Just rolls right off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> so, I have this amazing futon, which is just the most comfortable thing in the world for playing games on my TV. Got my life-size Primarina there, got a video all about her. Love her so much, and I really don't have anywhere else to put her other than here. Uh, so I actually have two big entertainment centers, two big cabinets to house most of my consoles and TV. Uh, on the top here, you can see some miscellaneous stuff. Got my little Ryan the Last Dragon collection. Uh, we got this Frozen 2-themed uh, Elsa thing. I, I love Frozen. Oh. Well, she's gone. <laughs> anyway, got Baby Yoda from The Mandalorian. We got Dio from Rise of Skywalker. These two here are really important to me because that was a zero-G indicator 
for Crew Dragon Demo 2, which was America's first crewed space launch since the end of the shuttle. And this is a zero-G indicator from Inspiration4, which was a fundraiser uh, that sent four people into space in an effort to raise money for St. Jude Children's Hospital. I was happy to have raised a whole lot of money to help the cause, and I was also happy to get this because look at it, it's adorable. So at the top here, we have back there, you can see my OSSC open source scan converter, of which I have like six consoles plugged in at any given time. This is my SCART switcher, and if you don't know what these are, I, I highly recommend you check out My Life and Gaming, uh, the YouTube channel. They go through how to get the best picture out of your old consoles, and I have heavily invested in it. So this, I currently have my Super Nintendo, PS1, and that says Genesis, but that's actually this cable here. What I have plugged in there now is my Sega Saturn, which I just got earlier this month. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's see here. This is my Tandy Vision. It does not work. It's just a display piece, but that's fine. Um, uh, my dad worked at Tandy, so when I found out that Tandy made a console, I just had to buy one. Even if it doesn't work, I'm happy to have it. <laughs> um, so we got my Wii U gamepad, my, uh, these, these controllers are used to control R2 over there. So, if, if he were on, I'd be able to completely control him with just one controller. So that's what those do. Got my PS Vita plugged in, ready to go at any given point. And down here on the uh, on the shelves themselves, we've got all my different consoles hooked up. I got my my second Nintendo Switch there with Pokeball Pluses all plugged in, ready to go. I got my Wii U, uh, Xbox 360 with an HD DVD player. That's how I watch my HD DVDs. <laughs> um, got my Wii. And down there's my original Xbox One, which is basically my Blu-ray player at this point. <laughs> um, and down there we got my Nintendo Labos and an external monitor for when I need it. Over here on this shelf we've got my Xbox with some Call of Duty skins. When, when I bought it, it just came with the skins and I never felt like taking them off. I kind of like the look on it. Got my PlayStation 2, this shelf. Got my PS1, and uh, the, the disc drives on these things tend to go bad, which is why you see it on its side there to sort of help it out. When it's on its side like that, it's never failed me once. Got my Atari Jaguar with my single Jaguar game in there to act as a dust protector. Got my Super Nintendo, and my newest edition, a Sega Saturn. I'm very happy to have this because I installed a Sadiator on this, which is an EverDrive. It lets me load up every Saturn game that I want. Very happy to have that. <clears throat> and then on the next shelf, we've got my uh, Sega Genesis and 32X. And over here is my Atari VCS. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, you're not missing out. <laughs> uh, and then down there, I actually have stored extra jewel cases for my CDs and DS cases for when I get new Game Boy games. Then I just, you know, open up the doors, pull them out, and make use of them. <clears throat> okay, over here on this side are the controllers for the consoles that I'm most likely to use. And here we got this little rack of controllers. You can see it's a mess. When I move, I'm going to try and do a better job of that, of, of organizing that. But every controller that I need is either there or there. Over here we've got this floating shelf that my dad made. Uh, just above that is a poster for Oris. Uh, we got my NES boxes up on top and some extra boxes as well. Wii U games, my Jaguar box. <clears throat> Here we got my two 3DO games. Sega CD, Sega Saturn, 30, CD32X, and uh, Japanese <clears throat> N64 game boxes. Very, very cool to have. And up top here, I actually have a... Uh, that is a TI-84 graphing calculator, which can also play games. And over there you can see my Atari 2600 games, my Intellivision games, uh, just, I just love old games. And here are my old school PC games. So whenever I want to play something on my Windows 98 over there, the CDs are over here. And then over there are some old stuff. I've got my old recording camera, some old batteries, old phones, uh, my sole Atari 5200 game over there. Just, you know, <clears throat> stuff that I don't want to get rid of, but I really don't have anywhere else to put it. In the back corner there are my stack of VHS tapes. 
I have literally over a thousand VHS tapes. I love old media. Uh, all of these belong to my dad, and uh, and now they're mine. <laughs> and that's just that. That's where like they've been there since since like a decade plus ago, and I've just never felt like moving the shelf. So that's why it's there. Okay, moving on. We've got this poster for Pokemon I Choose You. Signed by Sarah Nata Cheney, the current voice of Ash. Very happy to have that. It was great meeting her as well. This is just such a such a great piece to have. Anyway, on top of this entertainment center, we've got my three remote controls. This one's for my OSSC, this is for my HDMI switcher, and this is for my TV. We got this Ash's hat Pikachu that I got after seeing I Choose You in theaters. So adorable. Got this boombox, which is pretty much my only way of playing audio cassettes anymore. But it also has a CD player and radio. Got my record player here. I guess it's technically called a turntable. Uh, it's just a, a cheap one that I found on Best Buy. I wouldn't call it cheap even. It produces really nice sound. Uh, the stereo receiver is down there, which is like a high quality stereo receiver from the 80s. My dad knew what he was buying when he bought all this stuff. And uh, this is my little zippy hat that a fan sent me, and underneath that is the speaker that the stereo receiver uses. Anyway, um, this is my TV. This is a 32-inch flat-screen TV that I used to play my games on. Uh, it's nothing special. It's definitely a bit on the small side, but it works great, especially for, you know, you could see how it barely fits inside that hole. <laughs> Um, but I'm I'm very happy with it, and with all my games upscale, like there's no input lag or anything, so it's perfectly fine. Well, there is, but you know it's it's negligible. Uh, you got all the little switches down there, all the HDMI and composite switches. It's it's not pretty, but it works. You're going to see a whole lot more wires in the near future. We got my GameCube over there, along with a little webcam that I set up sometimes when I triple shiny hunt. Got my VCR there, playing v VHS tapes is very important to me. I mean, you saw that. <laughs> so I got my old VCR here perfectly, perfectly working. Got my Intellivision here plugged into the VCR to make it easier to play games. Here's my Atari 2600, which I have modified with composite out to make it easier to plug in the TV. Here we have my Japanese DVD player. Jap Japanese DVDs are a different region code than American DVDs, so if I want to watch my Japanese DVDs, I need a dedicated player for it. Luckily, Japanese Blu-rays and American Blu-rays are the same region code, so that's not an issue. Over there is my Wii Fit balance board, and this is more wires. These are all the extra wires that I've gotten over the years. There's an extra Elgato. Uh, it may not look like it, but I know where everything is, and I almost never need any of that. <laughs> Uh, this is the most important button of all. This is my yeet button. So, with that out of the way, moving on to my computer setup. So this is where I do all my streaming. This is an editing workstation. This is this is my, my computer, right? Uh, at this point, the computer is several years old. I am planning on building a new one later this year. Um, it For anyone who cares, it runs a GTX 1070. It has a Ryzen 7 1700X. Uh, CPU, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, and five terabytes total of hard drive space. Totally worth it. <laughs> and let's see, this is a 27 inch 4K monitor. This is a 24 inch 1080p monitor. Neither of them are high refresh. I don't care. I know, I know that that's better, but I really just don't care. <laughs> uh, okay, above that, we've got my PS5, my PS4, my Nintendo Switch all hooked up, ready to go uh, with the press of a button. It's very, very nice. We got a Fortnite Llama. We got a little Saturn V model there. And of course, we got lighting and my microphone. This is just a, a blue snowball. Um, uh, I pretty much have this set up so I'm, I can play anything on or off stream with the press of a few buttons. It's really, really nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. Forgot to mention that Switch is a launch model. I got it midnight launch night, and I've had it, and I'm so, so happy to have it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's brought me so much joy so the very top there you can see I'm pretty much all my big boxes collector's edition stuff like that so that's my box for my second switch my sonic mania collector's edition Alcana. i backed that at kickstarter 
Starlink, my original Switch, uh, some Switch CEs, uh, sc- uh, you know, Skylanders, Shantae, um, Octopath Traveler, like, you know, collector's edition stuff. And here are all my Pokeballs. Did I mention I like Pokemon? We got this color-changing Pikachu acrylic display here, which I'm very, very... I, I just love it. It's adorable. It, it does change colors, I promise you. It's just changing it very slowly. Okay, you can tell now. <laughs> that was given to me as a Christmas present a few years ago. The only five Disney Infinity figures I ever cared to get. Some extra stuff there. Um, you know, a DS case, an Asuna pop. A little... You can't tell very well, but that is a music box from Final Fantasy VII that plays Eris theme. Okay, over here we have all my console boxes that I haven't shown off yet. I'm very happy to have those. I really don't know where I'm going to find the room to put those after I move, but I, I want to make sure that I keep them no matter what. I mean, how many people do you know of who have a box for an Atari Jaguar? Seriously. Got all my pop vinyls here. I have a complete Zootopia pop vinyl set. Um, most of the Frozen ones and a random Tracer one there. And then my Amiibo collection. I do own every single Amiibo ever made. Uh, Amiibo figure. With the, with the exception of the Trophy Monster Hunters. Those don't count. Everything that was ever released in retail, I have. Every single one. And room there for when the other fighters get released. This down here, well, honestly, it's just a, uh, a storage place for me to put my work laptop. But otherwise, on top, this is where I have put my favorite Pokemon cards. Every single one of these has a special meaning for me. This is my favorite Pokemon card of all time, this Latios Latios GX. It just looks beautiful. Look at it. <laughs> um, but we also have Ash's Pikachu, which was given away to anyone who went to see I Choose You in theaters. We have this uh, Jumbo Pokemon Movie 5 card and this Jumbo Victini card that was given away to people who went to see those movies in theaters. After seeing this movie in theaters, I actually proposed to my wife. Some unopened packs from Detective Pikachu and some Latios Latios cards. At one point, this was my favorite card of all time. Now it's second to that one. So yeah, that's what those are. Oh yeah, and my uh, Super Mario cereal, which is also an amoeba. I forgot to mention those. <laughs> So, pretty much nothing from here on out is video game related, so if you're done watching, then I completely understand. But I love what, what's left that I have to show off. So first off, up there is a poster for Sword Art Online Ordinal Scale, which was the first movie. And over there is this beautiful painting of Elsa. Um, me and my wife go to Disney World every single year, and we try and pick up art whenever we do. And that was the very first one that we got. The rest of it is in our bedroom. <laughs> so this display is actually, like, this this whole thing was actually a GameStop display. I think that they used to sell, like, pops or something like that. And uh, they were just getting rid of it. So I got it. And it's cool, so cool that I actually own something that was used inside GameStop. I use this to display my space mission patches. Every single human space flight... Um, has a mission patch associated with it. You guys might be familiar with, like, if I can flip back, the uh, one for Apollo 11, for example. And I collect them. <laughs> so, and I even have little plaques here showing which missions are currently in space. So right now, Crew 3 is docked to the station and will be until the end of April. So that's what I do here. Plus this nice little quote from Krista McAuliffe, who was on Challenger. Down here... We have some of my uh, video game related books. I've got the Switch Collector Volume 1, the NES Classics Guide, the Virtual Boy Guide, some magazines including one that I was in. I wish I could pull it out, but I'm too lazy. <laughs> right here is my Game Boy Advance Latios Latios themes. If I had to get rid of every single thing in my room, except for like five things, this is one that I would keep. And underneath that is a film canister with a 35 millimeter film roll from Pokemon Heroes. Now, speaking of Pokemon Heroes, this, if I could pull it out, is a very rare product that was released with the movie and like like one of the holy grails for Pokemon Heroes fans. I'm very happy to have that. <laughs> and uh, there's no way I'm gonna be able to put that back in place. Down there is my Pokeball backpack and hat for whenever I get ready to do cosplaying. And 
Let me go ahead and show this off. This is a scale model Saturn V that I 3D printed. This thing is almost as tall as I am. Like I am like that high above it. <laughs> like seriously, it's like five foot two. Uh, it's a one to 72 scale model. I love making the different rockets. Like I have more there that are all done like the iconic SpaceX Falcon 9, the Atlas V. New Shepard, that's the one that sent William Shatner into space. And I'm working on printing a Starship right now as well. And these are all to scale with each other. So if you ever wondered, the one that sent William Shatner into space, it's only about that big compared to the mighty Saturn V. <laughs> and I got more than I'm working on that you could probably catch a glimpse of over there. Uh, anyway, and then we're coming to the end here. Let's see if I can't get, this angle's good, okay. So top shelf are all my VHS clamshells. I love collecting VHS clamshells, especially from Disney. So much nostalgia. <laughs> uh, there's my non-special edition Star Wars trilogy, all my Pokemon VHS tapes. And right here is my Pokemon trading card game. So let me just pull this over here. So I've gotten into collecting the cards again and I'm going after one per Pokemon, so I'm going for a Pokédex worth of cards. And I'm, I'm, I've made progress over the last few months. I'm super happy with it. It really does bring me joy to start collecting these again. So yeah, working slowly on that. And down there, uh, let's see here. This compartment are my laser discs. If you don't know what laser discs are, um, they're DVDs the size of a record. <laughs> And I love collecting them. I'm very sorry for the shadow there, but yeah, not really a way to make light come into this corner here. And then everything else are my records. Most of these were my dad's, like all but maybe 10 of them were belong to my dad. And now they're mine and I love listening to them. And this is like the perfect place to put them as well. So yeah, everyone, that was my game room. <laughs> That was the Skull Game Room Tour 2022. The very last tour of this room because I will be moving later this year to somewhere else. And when I do, all this is going with me. Undoubtedly, it will be set up in a different way than it is now. But I have spent a whole lot of time making this room my own and I'm super happy that I have. It's so, so nice to have a place like this. And I'm so happy that I got to share it with all of you. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to leave a like and tell me what your favorite part of the room is. And yeah, until next time, everyone have a great day. And I'll see you all later.